What's going on, Z Warriors? Mr. Waffles here, and today I'm going to just show you guys the information that's been on the Dragon Ball Super Card game. They've been updating us um, almost every day now, which is pretty awesome on their like uh, Facebook page. So make sure you definitely like them and follow them. And I'll have a link to all their um, media outlets in the in the description down below. So so we know that we might be getting the how to play video next week. So I'm definitely excited to cover that and uh, to see how. Um, it all works out with the video, and I'm pretty excited to really see this game uh, launch, to be honest with you. I mean, if you just even look at this, like, front um, page right here with this picture, it just looks very in enticing and, you know, um, looks like it's going to be a boss card game. So, that being said, I know they updated it with, um, like, a play manual, uh, which is hard to read for some people, which I understand because it's pretty spread out and uh, looks very... Um, hard to kind of grasp the concept of the game, but I'll probably do my best of explaining like what I think based on reading it, uh, how the game would um, work out so far. Uh, with that being said, um, I'll just show you guys for those who probably don't know anything about the game or just probably looking at it for the first time or probably don't follow as much as others, but just uh, check in from time to time the latest updates. So if you look here, and uh, I'll have the link to the website as well, but this is just a nice introduction letting you guys know about the different colors of the, the card game so as you can see there's four different colors uh, red blue green and yellow and uh, each color has a certain uh, theme or a certain thing that they do really well so as you can see red enhance your allies power and striking abilities uh, a great color dealing at uh, dealing damage so red also has some uh, Good, uh, some effects in the I know in the Japanese card game they had like burn damage effects, pretty much effects that um, you know it's not actually doing damage by battle, but more so just by card effects. So I'm not sure if this game might have it, but um, I can see that being a possibility for sure as well to give Red uh that style of like um just raw power kind of thing, uh bypassing just straight up uh combat and just kind of dealing effect damage or if it um deals with combat it'll be like really high numbers to really like boost your stuff so if you look here at this card uh divine aid vados it has an auto ability when you combo with this card if your leader card is red and uh you have your life is four lower draw one card and uh, add plus ten thousand to this card's combo for the duration of the turn which you know for some people might be like uh what does this even mean you know what's all this stuff going on um Pretty much, again, once we get used to like what the combo system is all about, it will definitely make more sense. Um, and it's really cool because it uh, really shows support for the leader. Again, um, each leader has a certain color as well as race um, or trait and other factors involved. So obviously if you're playing a red deck, whether it be like um, if your leader is like Goku or Beerus, and, but if... As long as they're red, you know, this card will work with them. So it just shows that it's good red support, and it's also a god. So let's say if you're playing Beerus, and uh, he's your leader, and he says, you know, if your all your uh, battle cards that are gods gain, like, plus 5,000 power, it would work both with that, So because it's a god, and it's a, a red card. So, you know, it's a lot of mix and matching, which is really cool to really check out. Uh, we'll look at blue. So with blue, it's really cool because... Um, I think right now the only style that really kind of uh, increases the, the energy. In this game, energy is pretty much like mana. So once you draw, you can choose one card from your hand and uh, you know turn it upside down, and that will be used as your energy or, or your mana, pretty much, or your land. So blue really utilizes the aspect of kind of ramping that up to maybe get some more energy outside of combat or something like that. But to know, um, in this game, you have 50 cards. You know, you draw six. Um, you mulligan and uh, you take the top eight cards, and that'll be your like your life, or I wouldn't say prize cards, but more so your life. And pretty much with that, um, with blue, if there's any more energy ramping that's going on, it's probably either going to be from maybe like the top of your deck or some other effect. So I feel like with blue, you have to be very careful in how you um, manage your energy acceleration just because you don't want to deck yourself out because you're going to be drawing with your leader cards. You're going to have certain card effects that let you draw cards plus um, getting a bunch of energy. So you don't want to exhaust yourself too much, but I feel it's a, a good reward if you kind of balance it right. And blue, it's uh, charge up your energy to at least powerful cards. If you want to specialize in this energy, blue is the color for you. So it's pretty much, um, again, the energy 
um, acceleration kind of style, as well as some other things. Uh, I know they didn't go too much detail with other aspects of these colors, but I think blue is also about bouncing cards as well. Um, and, you know, each style has another kind of theme or trait that they do really well. But this is just like an introduction to it. Uh, so if you look at this Goku, Overflowing Spirit, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Son Goku, when this card inflicts damage to you, it has a critical ability. When this card inflicts damage to your opponent's life, they pl um, they place that many cards in their drop area instead of their hand. So pretty much with this, um, you know, in the in this game, when you're dealt damage, again, I was talking about the eight life that you have at the beginning of the game. Uh, anytime you take damage, um, you take one of those life cards. I'm not sure if it has to be a certain order, but th those cards go to your hand. In the Japanese one, when you take damage, the that card goes into your energy right away. So blue was pretty absurd just because just the way the game was built, you would get natural energy from you know conducting your phases. Plus, anytime you would take damage from your opponent, you get more energy. Plus, blue being the energy ramps ramp style itself guarantee more energy so you know with blue you know you can pump out really crazy uh, combo cards right away just because you know if your opponent deals you damage that's two that's two damage that's two energy plus you know drawing for turn and getting an energy plus any other effects with blue to get energy so uh it made blue a little bit out of control in that aspect uh but they're definitely trying to slow the game down a bit which is awesome and uh it's good to really make it more grindy and more skillful and thoughtful but with critical if you look at this card uh, it has a really cool effect where you know anytime you take the damage instead of the card going to your hand it goes to the drop area instead and it has a permanent ability so during your turn if you have five or more energy this card gains plus ten thousand power which is really cool because it's blue so it works within that theme so as you can see um, where the card number is that's like the cost of the card and these little circles right right there tell you um how much of each color you need to to play so the card costs four not six it costs four but you need to play um or tap two blue energy to play it and this one this card costs two but you have to tap at least one red energy um to, to play it so now going to green and yellow uh if we look at the green obliterate your opponent's cards when it comes to Destruction, green has no equal. So the green style is all about destruction. I know in the little pamphlet that uh, I got from my local game store, shout out to Brother Scrim's Games, uh, from the pamphlet that I saw, they had uh, the green style, and it also talked about hand destruction, deck destruction, and uh, field destruction. So green is just a destructive style in general. So if you want to just clear your opponent's board, um, or really like mess up their deck or hand, you know, green is definitely that, that color for you. So if you look at the Tenacious Vegeta, it has a revenge ability that when this card is attacked, uh, you KO or basically uh, kill the, uh, the the card after battle. And it has a permanent ability, this card cannot be attacked by a leader card. So this is really cool. Uh, this card, as you can see, it costs two, but you need to play two green because it makes sense. This card just um, uh, that strong where it can't just be like... Uh, one green and uh, just one colorless where it can kind of just be splashed in a deck. Uh, but this card in itself, you know, it can't be attacked by a leader card, so it almost guarantees that it's going to kill um, your one of your opponent's um, battle cards. So, you know, it's really good that this card just kind of just is a good one for one to just uh, knock out some of your opponent's problematic cards in, in battle. Now we go into yellow. Uh, the yellow uh, style is about boosting high defense capabilities and counters. Yellow is all about interfering with your opponent's strategies. So, really with yellow, I'm really excited for yellow, to be honest, out of all of them, just because um, I feel like yellow has that recovery kind of, uh, you know, uh, tricks out of its sleeve kind of style, where it's not, like, clear-cut, like, okay, you know, this is about ramping, this is about power boost, it's about destroying. Like, yellow is all about, you know, I feel like toolboxing or some kind of... Um, some kind of crazy gimmick, and then plus it has Frieza um, on the front uh, of this card, so it makes you think that, like you know Frieza's always up to something, he always has some trick up its sleeve. So I feel like the style definitely represents that. And it, this card right here, Frieza Hell is Terror, has a, a a lot of things on it, so I'll kind of break it down for you guys. So it has Evolve, which has the two colors and one. So I assume that um, if you want to play this card on top of another Frieza card, for example, or the specified card. Um, you know you have to tap two yellow and one of any color so three 
So it seems like, again, I'm not too sure how Evolve cards work. I'm thinking that you can just play the card as is, where you can um, play it where it costs four, and you need at least two yellow to tap to play it. Or um, if you want to evolve it, it gets an ability. So if you look here, it says Evolve, again, the two yellow and the one, and it says Frieza. So I think you have to play this on top of a Frieza card. And it has the ability double strike, so this card inflicts two damage instead of one when attacking. So um, you might think, well, why do I want to give my opponent two cards in hand? Well, again, the more cards you have in your hand is definitely good, but when you add a resource element to a game, it really kind of curves it. So, you know, you can have like a 10 card hand, but if you don't have the energy to play your cards to defend or whatever, it's pretty much useless. So um, with Frieza right here, it seems like, you know, you can really like. If you happen to deal damage to your opponent and your opponent doesn't have that much energy, uh, you know, it's probably good for you because then it's like, hey, um, you're getting closer to victory. At the same time, your opponent can't really make that insane comeback if they don't have the resources available for it. And it has an auto ability. When a card evolves into this card, choose all your opponent's cards with blocker and switch them to rest mode. So with that being said, um, you know, it, it seems like, again, you can either play the card as is, or you get the extra benefit if you evolve it to get a certain ability. So, it seems like evolve cards, you know, just like in Pokemon, how you just play it on top, that's how it will work. And the ability of resting stuff. So, that's what um, I think Yellow really specializes in, where it's like stunning uh, your opponent's cards. So, if your card is in rest mode, they can be attacked. Um, you can't attack an opponent's battle card unless it's, uh, unless it's tapped. So, with Yellow, it seems like... Um, it specializes in that where it kind of stuns your opponent's board and then you kind of pick away by attacking their units. And I believe you can't, um, I'm not sure if you can block as well if they're tapped. So I know in the Japanese one, um, if a card is rested or like taps sideways, um, they can't block. So if your opponent has like a full board and you tap all their stuff, kind of like if you ever played uh, Kaijudo, like that card Holy Awe, uh, how it ta um, taps all your opponent's cards. It's kind of the same thing in this in this game. So if you tap all your opponent's cards, uh, you know I believe that they can't block, so you can kind of just kind of go for game. Uh, if we look down here, it also says cards with other abilities, such in battle, has such keyword skills. So, yeah, and there's a lot of different keyword skills in this game. You know, if we look even here, we have Auto, that's one, Critical, that's two, Permanent, that's three, uh, revenge that's four, evolve that's five, double strike that's six, plus um, you know a bunch of other ones. You know, so uh, there's a lot of keywords in this game to really keep track of, and they added a couple more with the English version. So if we look here, um, look at the booster pack, and we see how you know what the booster pack will look like, as well as the breakdown of how much it will cost. And 12 cards for a booster pack is uh, really good. I always love that ratio. And, you know, it's a small set, just 114 cards, so it's good for uh, people to kind of just get right into it and almost kind of collect a whole set without feeling the need to, like, invest too heavily in the beginning. So uh, 60 commons, 30 uncommons, 12 rares, 8 super rares, 4 premium rares, and one pack includes 8 commons, 3 uncommons, and 1 rare or higher, which is awesome. And now we'll look at the starter deck. So yeah, the starter deck looks really cool, as you can see, like the image of um, Super Saiyan Blue, Goku, you know, right there, as well as inside the card, so you actually see what you're getting, which is which is awesome, uh, or at least you can see um, some aspect of the starter deck, which is cool. And uh, they're going for twelve dollars, and it has a breakdown, you know, it includes fifty cards, one leader card, uh, as a deck sells to start the game, and includes five starter deck exclusive cards. So if you want those starter exclusive cards, guys, definitely uh, get some booster packs when it comes in and the special pack set which includes um, four booster packs unlimited promo card and one rule manual so the promo card that we're getting is this one hit destruction of Vegeta which looks full art because um, it seems like it doesn't have that border thing as you saw in the other cards so that's gonna be really cool to check out and uh, yeah so for like sixteen dollars so it makes sense if it's four dollars a pack times four you know so let's see what the rule is I think they updated this as well and it's just breaking down what uh, the game kind of consists of um, for first-time players. So, you know, one leader card, and as you can see, with blue, um, with Goku, it's blue. And you can tell by the, the text right here. So this, I think, would be uh, a different color if 
the leader was that color because it doesn't specify like oh it's a blue leader right but if we look inside like a little text box here it's blue so I would assume that this Goku leader is a blue card and as you can see we know this is blue by the obvious colors over here so this Goku looks really cool and it's really simple you know one leader card and then a mixture of battle cards and extra cards you know and you can have four copies per card and that, that's pretty much it you know trying to find that ratio find that balance of everything so if we look at this Goku right here which looks really cool he has a permanent when you have seven or more energy this card gains dual attack which is once per turn when this card attacks switch that card to active mode after the battle so basically you can attack twice so you you attack you switch up and then attack again and auto once per turn when this card attacks draw one card then it's card games plus 1000 power for each one energy you have for the duration of the battle so as you can see this card gets beefy over time and it's almost like a finisher the game ender and if you look at the art that looks sick you guys gotta admit that looks really cool so this goku seems like you know you know you kind of ramp up that energy you know and start like going for the double attack uh, but only once per turn that um you get to draw so it's not like attack draw um go from rest to active attack again draw a card you know you only draw one card which is good and fair and then this vegeta which costs six but you need to pay again at least three blue to play it god chase vegeta so it's just uh you know six for 25 but it has dual attack and critical uh, but has the ability here when you evolve this card uh, choose one of your opponent's uh, battle cards with blocker and return it to their hand. So, with that being said, it's going to cost five to evolve into another Vegeta card, which makes sense because you know, in this game, how they just do transformations is by evolving. So if you're going from you know regular Goku to Super Saiyan one, uh, if they have like a Super Saiyan Goku, it might have the evolve keyword because it makes sense you would play it over like a regular Goku. Or even if you know in the show how sometimes you know if they kind of drain themselves or if they get tired they kind of go back down you know you're still evolving in the sense that you know you're going from one form and then going back to another so this you know vegeta pretty much you know is blue so you know you pretty much put it over uh, another vegeta card as if you're kind of evolving as if you're like transferring power and up which is awesome and then they have uh, some extra cards right here as you can see this one costs five and you need two blue energy to play it active main so during the turn uh, sorry, during this turn, you may activate your leader cards awaken, even if you have five or more life. Then choose up to four of your energy and switch them to active mode. So this card seems really powerful, especially late game. So what this means is that your opponents are awakened. So here's the, the awaken uh, text right here. And pretty much if you're, let's say, having Goku on the other side, um, you can, if you play this card, you know, you get to use this Goku's ab ability. And you can pretty much switch for um energy into active mode so pretty much like cost one so this card seems really really good especially for an uncommon which is awesome but again it uh you need two blue energy so you can't just like kind of splash it in anything you have to make sure your deck kind of tails around it and if we look at the card types as we talked about in my earlier videos the three different card types you have leader cards battle cards and extra cards so leader cards these cards are the core of your deck they're placed on the field at the beginning of the game leader card has like the awesome really cool cg illustrations the battle cards are essential to battle they're a huge cast of characters and they use the anime style illustrations and the extra cards which are good like support cards which help expand uh, expand your battle strategies so if you look here again these are all the different types so these are the um the extra cards right here and then the leader cards and the, the battle cards over there on the side so here's just a basic idea of the game so first player to deal enough damage to your opponent's leader card reduces his life to zero wins the game so we're eight leader cards uh sorry eight cards for the leader's life you could think of them almost as prize cards in a sense um and you know first person to lose them all actually loses not win so the point of the game you know with awakening combo to kind of deplete your opponent's life and when you're in tough spots they're telling you about awaken which is really cool so you just flip the card right over and you know that's the uh, awakened side right there and if we look here these are the combo cards um or not so much combo cards but combo like the kind of system battle system that's in this game so uh which we'll get more into i think once we get the how to play video so we you know it'll be a lot more clear but this is just a little overview of how the game is played so you sort of if you leader in active mode you know um in just a the regular way and then you decide who goes first whether die roll you draw six cards you have a mulligan 
and then you take the top eight cards of your your life deck or deck area and then you put them uh, face down and you can't look at them during the game which makes sense because when you take damage you know you take it from the life so let's say if I did two damage I take two of these life cards over here and I put them to my hand so if I can see them then I know which ones I would want for that moment so which would be like cheating unless it's like a card effect or something like that so this is like the pretty much the the, the area of how the game will look like the, the battle area where you put your battle cards combo where you know you put the cards here and this is where your energy is and mana so you know it looks kind of spread out but I think once you get a, a feel of it you know it'll probably be a lot easier and you know as card players we always kind of have things the way we kind of want them you know even if there's like a, a playmat of how uh, the card should be aligned you know we always have our own way of uh, fixing our cards and stuff and these are just an idea of um, some of the cards right here Oop, I'm sorry I went too far but yeah you know these are Somebody, if you look at this one, this Weiss has uh, 40,000 40, power, and it costs 12, and I think you need to put um, play at least 6 blue. So, um, you know, all these right here are blue. You know, I don't know why it's just blue, but, you know, we're going to be getting, like, the, the card checklist, I think, in, in June. Like, the first week in June, we're going to have at least, like, majority of the card set list that's coming out. And here's the game flow. So it's three phases, and they alternate their turns. So you charge where you, you know you draw and then you take one card from your hand and you may use it as um, you may play it as land to um, you know or as your energy and then you know you have your rest mode you want to switch all your stuff from untapped to tapped you know so from rest to active mode and you know, again right here and then the main phase so it's just like a breakdown of everything in here for you guys and it has like the play manual the um, play manual right there the rule manual and the play sheet so gives you an idea of how the game is going to be played so again it's just a little overview of um, what's to come and I'm really excited for it hopefully you guys are too and I know I've been talking to Bandai as well in regards to I know a lot of stores probably have like leftover panini product I know that Bandai is trying to um, do something where you know stores would get uh, tournament kits where they can get them for free so I'm just waiting to hear back from the my Bandai rep in terms of um, if the stores can just order them from like a one local place like GTS or something like that but again it's basically just letting the, the stores really just get a, a feel for the game and just get the product for free and uh, pretty much expose it that way so this right here I think is the rule so we already went over the, the manuals at the bottom which I kind of quickly want to show you guys uh, I think the play manual I believe um, so, yeah it looks pretty good like you can see it on here so this is just like the the overview of um, you know all the different um, elements of the of the game like the breakdown of the card and uh, you can kind of see what's all the stuff going on here you know the name and everything like that the cost of the card and um, all the other things that are involved there so it's a really good um, breakdown and introduction for those who have no idea how to play it or like what the game's all about. So we'll look here, I'm trying to see right here. And I'm not going to get too much into this with um, how the combo system works. I think it's probably better explained once we get a video on how it uh, actually functions. So I don't want to give you guys any misinterpretation of anything. But uh, this is just like, again, you guys can always check it out on the website for yourselves too if you guys want to uh, check it out. And they also have some frequently asked questions that you know new players might have or players in general might have. And then here's like a bunch of terms and keywords and uh, things of that nature. You know they have counter cards, they have counter attack cards, they have all these different keywords and a lot of different elements into the game. So uh, that's pretty much it for the video. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and let me know what color you guys. Uh, think will be dominant what color you guys are expected to play or mix and mash you know it's not set to just one color you can mix and mash all four if you want but again you know it will dilute the uh, certain cards that you would play so let me know what you guys think you know down in the comment section below and uh, that's pretty much it so hopefully you guys have a great weekend and enjoy the rest of your day that's with that being said mr waffles out